Hi, I'm Jing, an engineer on the Open Health Stack team at Google Health. Our mission at Google Health is to help billions of people be healthier, and we believe in the potential of mobile-based tools to help us achieve this. With Open Health Stack, our goal is to help accelerate the future of digital health by making it easier for developers everywhere to build next-generation healthcare apps. Previously in this series, we introduced the Android Fire SDK, a set of Kotlin libraries to help you build Android apps using the HR7 Fire standard. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use one of the libraries in the SDK, the Structured Data Capture Library, or the SDC library, to easily create an Android UI to collect health data. Before we start, it's worth noting that the SDC library is an Android implementation of the SDC implementation guide which is a specification for using Fire questionnaires to collect, validate, and process health data. If you're not familiar with the Fire standards or the SDC implementation guide, please follow the links below to learn more about them. But don't worry, you don't need to know everything about these specifications before starting to use the SDC library. In this video, we will be using simple examples to demonstrate the features and APIs in the SDC library. Now, let's get started. The SDC library helps you build Android apps to collect health data using Fire questionnaires. To understand what that entails, let's take a look at the five main features of the SDC library. First and foremost, the SDC library can take a Fire questionnaire and dynamically generate Android UI for it using the widgets and layouts we have built. This provides a more consistent user experience and significantly reduces the amount of work for app developers. Data quality is paramount in health data collection. The SDC library can validate user input and display error messages to guide the user to complete forms correctly. It also supports advanced form behavior as specified in the SDC implementation guide. For example, enable when statements, also known as skip logic, can be used to show or hide certain questions as a result of previous answers. Dynamic expressions can be used to provide the user with answer options, populate the questions with the initial answers, or even automatically answer questions using information available. The answers are collected in a consistent manner as fire questionnaire responses. Furthermore, the SDC library also supports data extraction and population. They are processes to transform questionnaire responses to and from other fire resources. For example, you can create a fire patient from a user input in a patient registration form, or you can use an existing fire patient to pre-populate the form so that the user doesn't have to re-enter all the data whilst editing a particular field. Last but not least, the SDC library supports custom themes so you can match the look and feel of the form with the rest of your app. To summarize, the SDC library supports questionnaire rendering, data validation, advanced form behavior, data extraction, and population from and to the questionnaire and custom themes. Now, it's time to take a look at how to use the SDC library. If you want to follow along in Android Studio, you can use the link below to download the zip file that includes the code of the sample app we're building here. Now let's begin. First, include the SDC library dependency in your app's build file. After this, you can use the questionnaire fragment to display a form and capture answers. The questionnaire fragment is the main interface for your app to interact with the SDC library. Your app will pass information to the SDC library as arguments to questionnaire fragment and it will collect the answers using the public APIs defined in the Questionnaire Fragment class. But before we can do all that, there are some preparations to do. First, add the Fragment Container view to your layout file. This will be used as a placeholder to place the actual Questionnaire Fragment inside. Second, prepare the file questionnaire to be rendered. If the questionnaire is small in size, you can pass the JSON string directly to the fragment. Or if it's more than a few kilobytes, you can pass the file URI for the questionnaire fragment to load it. Here, we read the content of the questionnaire.json file, which contains a simple questionnaire to collect the name and the date of birth of the user. Now that you have the placeholder as well as the actual file questionnaire ready to go, you just need to create a questionnaire fragment using them. This can be done in the onCreate function in your activity or the onCreate view function in your fragment. Now, run your app and you see the form you are generated by the SDC library with an input field for the name and a date input widget for the date of birth. Go ahead and try interacting with the widgets and input some data. There's only one last thing to do. 
your app still needs to collect user input from the UI. You can use the Fragment Result API to receive a signal when the user clicks the Submit button in the form. And to retrieve the actual user input, call the Get Questionnaire Response function, which will return a Fire Questionnaire Response object. Now, let's come back to the app and click the Submit button, and you can see the questionnaire response being printed out in the logcat. The SDC library also supports form validation and advanced form behavior. To check out its support for specific features and extensions defined in the SDC implementation guide, refer to the SDC library's documentation. You can find the link below. But for now, let's take a look at a more complex fire questionnaire that showcases some of these features in the SDC library. This is a questionnaire with two pages. Each page is defined using a fire item control extension. The SDC library understands these extensions and will render the questionnaire using a paginated layout. On the first page, we have questions about the user's name and date of birth. In a separate question, the user's age is calculated from date of birth using a calculated expression written in FirePath. The SDC library is able to interpret the FirePath expression and carry out the calculation. On the second page, we have two questions. The first question asks if the user has been vaccinated, and the second question asks the user how many times they have been vaccinated. There is enable when logic defined on the second question so that it will only be shown if the user answers yes to the first question. Lastly, the minimum and maximum values allowed for input are defined using validation extensions. If the user inputs a value outside of this range, an error message will show up, prompting the user to correct the input. Now, let's take a look at how the SDC library renders this questionnaire. The questionnaire is rendered in two pages. On the first page, the user's age is automatically calculated from the date of birth. And on the second page, the second question is only shown if the user answers yes to the first question, and there is runtime validation on the answers the user provides. To demonstrate the supported features of the SDC library, we have built the Catalog app, which you can build in Android Studio and run on your own Android device. To recap, the SDC library is an Android implementation of the SDC implementation guide and it helps developers build apps to collect health data in a consistent way. It can render forms on an Android device and collect user input. It also supports form validation, advanced form behavior, data extraction and population, and custom themes. To learn more about the SDC library's features, such as multi-language support and custom widgets, explore our website and the Android Fire SDK repository. To keep learning about how to build with OpenHealth Stack, check out the next video in our series. Thank you.